Hello, people of the internet! My name is Johnny. Welcome back to yet another FNAF Movie News video. Today, we're going to be dissecting and analyzing the final trailer for the film. According to Daco, who got sent the trailer early from Scott and Blumhouse, this is the final trailer. So... I guess this is the last we're going to see of footage before the film releases, probably, you know, besides a few clips that are going to appear, like, on TV, you know, TV spots, stuff like that. But as for full trailers, it seems like this is the final one. So, we got a lot to dissect. If you're excited for the FNAF movie, don't forget to scroll down, tickle that subscribe button to stay up to date with everything going on with the film. We got yet another FNAF movie news video coming out tomorrow. And also, if you missed my reaction to this brand new trailer, I'm going to leave that link down below. But now, let's not waste any more time. We will be watching an upscaled 4K Ultra HD upload of the trailer just to give you guys a bit more detail. And like I said, I've already seen this trailer. I've already reacted to it. I'm going to be pausing in between the trailer if you've not yet seen it i highly recommend watching the trailer coming back here to see the analysis and now here we go so it starts off with mike driving up to what appears to be his house hi this is mike i was just calling to see if that job that you offered was still available yes <laughs> so we got mike schmidt on the call with William Afton, or as he's called in this scene, Steve Raglan. Most likely, this is just an identity-hiding name. You know, he's trying to create a disguise for himself. As if he really was that killer who killed all the kids back in the 80s, you know, having his name out there, oh, you know, I'm William Afton, that's gonna draw some attention. So just like in the trilogy novels where he was called Dave Miller, he now, in this film, has a brand new uh, disguise name, Steve Raglan. But going back a bit... Hi, this is Mike. We get our first look at Abby in this trailer. Looks like she's playing on the floor. You got Mike in the background. I'm just calling to see if that job... Once again, calling William. And from character descriptions, we do know that Mike is the sole, uh, like, guardian for Abby. Seems like he's the one having to take care of her. And we get more evidence for that in the form of this notice letter right here. This is a notice of delinquency. A lot of people have been pointing out this may be a notice for not paying his bills, not paying his mortgage, not doing a proper job looking after Abby, who is still a child. Could also be when he's beating up some dude in a fountain at his job later on. That would make a lot of sense as well. But clearly... Clearly, he is not in a good financial uh, and, you know, work situation going on here. He's in trouble. Which is why he tells William, The security guard. I will take anything. I will take anything. Any job you have, I need it right now. And also, look at how surprised and shocked William is. The job that you offered was still available. Yes. He's like, wait, someone's actually calling about this place? Like, who in their right mind would take this job? You know, his eyes light up. He's like... Yes, it's still available. So it looks like we got Mike getting ready for his first day on the job. Peak, the sister location, Sun Clock in the background as well. Neat Easter egg there from Blumhouse. This was huge in the 80s with the kids. <laughs> this was huge in the 80s with the kids. I would know, Mike. We get a shot of, of course, the taken down sign, the closed sign with all of the art taking off, the letters falling down, all of the vines and shrubs growing around it. They shut it down years ago. The owner's just not ready to let it go yet. They shut it down years ago, but the owner is just not ready to let it go yet. That's definitely uh, William saying that. That is definitely, you know, Matthew Lillard's voice. Years ago, the owner's just not ready to let it go yet. A lot of people are kind of split halfway down the middle of who the owner is. A lot of people are thinking it's just William. Though there are definitely some people who are curious about Mary Stuart Masterson because we also know that she is an unnamed villain in this film and we still have yet to see her in any official media for this film. So I also think it might be likely that she is kind of the, the mastermind behind everything. She's the one keeping the pizzeria open. She's the one not letting it be fully destroyed and shut down just yet. I will work and you will sleep. I understand. <laughs> so he brings Abby along. I know a lot of people are questioning this decision. Definitely not the best idea from Mike. But again, keep in mind, he's the only one looking after her. Most likely just didn't want to leave her home alone. So he brings her along for the ride. You will sleep. I understand. <laughs> she, she, she goes, I understand. Even though... It's quite the opposite way around we're going to see uh, later on in the trailer because he's the one that falls asleep. But she brings along a little stuffed teddy bear. Possible foreshadowing. Freddy Fazbear plushie. Them walking in. Peep the Honda. Such a cool shot. The outside, the facade of the pizzeria looks so, so good. Oh my gosh. 
They're unlocking the gate. This is our first look at the inside of the restaurant. This is, of course, the entrance. Got some gumball machines, got some posters to your left and also to your right. Just picturing some children, uh, probably like, you know, same vein as my fun day at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. I love Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. Then, oh, look at the dining room. It's all destroyed, right? There's so much debris everywhere. Chairs knocked over, party hats in places. Probably shouldn't be. Coin counter knocked over as well. They're walking in. Give me your hand. They take each other's hand and they explore the pizzeria. Another poster over here as well. Then they go into the employee's only office. Uh, we can tell this is the office because this looks to be, uh, you know, still the dining area with the checkerboard pattern, the purple, the blue, the bricks. And then you go down the hallway into the office right here. You can even see a bit of the window right here. You've got an exit out this side, which is interesting. You've got a fire alarm, security camera. This is most likely the supply closet, the janitorial office we're going to see later on. Another wide shot of Mike coming out from the opposite end, it seems, of the office hallways. We do know that the office is down this hallway. Daco confirmed it, and we've already seen this shot, so there's not too, too much to talk about. Besides, again, the dining room looks insane. The stained glasses of the characters, Chica, the cupcake, Bonnie, looks like this is Freddy. Mike in front of all the drawings. We get a better shot of the drawings later on, so we're going to move past that right now. Again, the Freddy stained glass. Again, oh, the set design is just so, so, so cool. Shout out to everyone working on this film. Creepy shot of Foxy's shadow on a door. Again, we've seen this in the teaser trailer. Producer of Megan. Rats in the vents just to symbolize how old and abandoned this place is. We do see later on in the trailer a shot of a vent opening, so I was curious to know if any of the animatronics could go into the vents. If only there was a small enough animatronic that could fit in the vents, though. Let's remember that. We get a shot of Mike in the office, and of course, the main thing everyone's been talking about with this shot, the Employees of the Month. If you've not seen just yet, that Employees of the Month poster featuring a whole bunch of faces is home to a whole bunch of Easter eggs and cameos. You've got Daco, you've got 8-Bit Ryan, you've got Baz, you've got DJ Sturf, you've got Fusion Z Gamer, you've got Razbowski. So, so, so many FNAF content creators on that Employee of the Month. Uh, board and that's just so cool to see huge shout out and congratulations to all those guys That's freaking insane to be part of this film. I was especially uh, Pleasantly surprised by DJ and fusion. They weren't flown out to the FNAF set like Daco, Raz, Baz, and Ryan But again, I'm very happy that they could still get a cameo in the film because those guys are fantastic I freaking love both those guys and all the guys on the board. Anyways going back to the office. We've got Mike Looks like he's just turning on the light switches, nothing too big. You've got the phone, you've got the fan, you've got the help wanted, you know, soda cup. You've got the office chair back here. This board actually has an It's Me Easter egg, fun fact. But the main thing I want to bring up is the lack of security doors and, I guess, window as well. Maybe I was tripping when I was like... Hey, there's a window over there. If you remember back when Razbowski got back from going to the FNAF set, he made a video and he talked about the office a bit and how one major aspect of the office changed. And it turns out that was the security doors. Because now, they're just basic doors, which, you know, makes sense realistically in this context. Uh, it also... It seems like throughout all the spots we've gotten for the movie... A lot of it takes place outside of the office, you know? Like, there are so many shots of Mike and Vanessa and Abby out in the dining room, crawling through the vents, you know? Um, just in other rooms where they're chit-chatting about the backstory. So it seems that the office might play a... a little bit of a small role in this film, which... Honestly, I'm all there for it. I think the film would be very, very boring if it was just Mike in the office the whole time. So, yeah. Honestly, a change I'm not too, too upset about because I, I just want to see more of them walking around the pizzeria. Like, that is such a cool environment. Of course, they're going to use that to their fullest potential. All you have to do is keep your eyes on the monitor. All you have to do is keep your eyes on the monitor. Get a shot of him turning on the monitors. And look at how retro this setup is. Looks like we've got, what, seven monitors as well? Pirate Cove? Keep your eyes. Pirate Cove gets lit up. We can see that for the first time. The Celebrate poster as well. The classic Celebrate poster from FNAF 1. I was kind of hoping they would do a... Sorry, hit the mic. I was kind of hoping they would do a remastered version of the Celebrate poster with the FNAF movie characters, but 
I guess not. I guess they wanted it more as an Easter egg for fans. The Help Wanted Paper Crumple is there as well. Again, the soda can, I already pointed that out. But again, look at how retro all these cameras are. And I talked about it earlier, Mike can see so many different cameras at the same time. Like, he can see the hallway, the dining room, Pirate's Cove, you can see four other rooms as well. I really hope they play into that aspect, because, you know, as we all know, in the original FNAF games, you can only look at one camera at a time, because we don't have a full monitor display like it does in the movie. So I'm very curious to see how they play into that mechanic for the film. Uh, again, even though it doesn't seem like they're going to be in the office for very long, I hope they get at least some decent scream time. Um, of Mike, you know, being a classic security guard watching the camera. I was like, wait, did I just see someone move? But he goes to turn on a VHS tape. Welcome. And lo and behold, it is Kim. This is the training tape. It looks like we saw in the original teaser video. To Freddy Fazbear's, where fantasy and fun come to life. Okay. And you got Mike just going, okay, I guess this is a little weird, but you know, anything for money, I gotta get that money. And then we've got Vanessa showing up. Look at how, look at, <laughs> dude, I, okay. Huge shout out to the actors as well. I've been praising Jim Henson's and the set designers. Huge shout out to the actors because they're all doing an amazing job from the trailers alone. Specifically Josh Hutcherson. I love his portrayal of Mike. It, it reminds me a lot of how Mike was depicted in the, um, the logbook. You know, very sarcastic, very like, whatever, let's just like get this over with. It's it's amazing. I love I love his portrayal of Mike so so much. <laughs> we got hi. <laughs> it's like let me in, please. This Halloween. You must be new security guard. Can I? We got Vanessa showing up. Vanessa is a cop in this version of the film. And again, massive shout out. Elizabeth Lale kills it as Vanessa. Uh, help you, officer. Have you met them yet? Have you met them yet? Yeah, look at this. This is not the office. This is like some break room, it seems like. You've got a dartboard um, up at the top left. Yeah, it seems like just some break room. Uh, some lockers here as well. Got a drawing of in someone's house, by the way. Freddy, Bonnie, Chica, Foxy, as well as three kids. I've seen some people point out this could be Vanessa herself, because it looks like a typical officer uniform, you know, blue with a yellow badge. It does make you question how Vanessa knows so much about these missing kids and Freddy's and the security guards, you know, is she showing up to see, all right, well, what actually happens when this is, uh, when there's a security guard here, because all the other ones have gone missing. I've seen other people speculate that she was friends with the children who got killed, and that's why she is still, you know, so dead set on coming back to this location, trying to figure out what happened. That's why she knows so much. Also interesting, it says B-Day right here. So someone's birthday happened pretty recently. More shots of Mike first finding the animatronics on the main stage, pulling back the curtain. Met who? Met who? Them. Them. So, so awesome. These shots are insane. Just look at, I still can't get over Freddy's endoskeleton. The endos in this film are insane. You can see Chica just in the darkness there. And then he does the one thing he told Abby to do, not himself, he's got a job to do. He takes a little bit of a me, 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 me. Also, notice this is a different shot. He's also got some pills there, maybe some sleeping pills and a journal. Notice this is a different shot of him sleeping. He's got no headphones on in this one, but he's got headphones on in this one. It could be this is when he first falls asleep. You know, he puts on some relaxing music. He dozes off, falls into the desk, and then I guess they could have fallen off as he hit the desk, but we don't see them anywhere, so I'm guessing... This dude might fall asleep two times. And then everything goes crazy. We can see a bit more of the office during these kooky shots. All the monitors glitch out. You can see a, a Visit Nebraska poster, I guess. The Celebrate poster is still there. You can see it's been edited slightly because Bonnie's guitar, his original guitar was actually copyrighted, fun fact. So they've had to change it up. <laughs> you can see a Bonnie plushie right here. So music starts blasting everywhere, the power comes on, everyone activates, the curtains open. Look at that, Mike is freaking out, he's like, I gotta stop this. Turns off the power, even though it looks like he turns it on in this scene, maybe a bit of, you know, splicing trick trickery. But let's go back, because that was a very chaotic uh, sequence and we missed quite a bit. So we've got the arcade turning on, we can see 
more posters, whole bunch of, seems like generic arcades, I guess. You got Ski Ball over here. Yo, shout out Ski Ball. The ball pit is over here as well. Uh, there's a sign here. Can't quite make out what it says, though. You got the cafeteria over here. You've got the prize counter right here, the Let's Eat sign. All of the officially licensed uh, FNAF merchandise as well. These are the Sanchi plushies. I think these masks were made by BioWorld. Or maybe these are Sanchi as well. I can't quite remember, but <laughs> you've got officially licensed merchandise. You can also see a bit of the movie-specific merchandise here with the cups. The stage opens up with all the animatronics. I also love how Bonnie's ears, like, go sideways so much. They're performing on the stage. <laughs> they look so good, man. Freddy, Bonnie, Chica. The cupcake is singing along as well. Look at him go. And look at how accurate the stage is. You've got the bricks on the background. You've even got the clouds as well for decor. Here's a shot without all the blinding lights for a couple frames. Oh my gosh, man. I cannot get over these guys. Yeah, the clouds you can see, all the lights around the stage. It's just, it's so incredible, man. So, Bonnie blows up. He's dead. I... I still don't know what's going on with this scene. I do not know if this is a result of Mike quickly shutting down the power and it, I don't know, I guess gets confusing and it's like, all right, turn everything off and that like causes some electrical spark in Bonnie. Or maybe this just happens and all the power goes out. Cause again, he's turning it on here. Like it seems like this is when he first puts on all the power. So it could be he turns on the power, he gets himself situated in the office, the pizzeria, puts on music, falls asleep, everything goes all crazy, I guess. Again, it, it could be trickery with all the arcades turning on. Because that could just be him turning on power for the first time, and then lights, you know, not lights, music starts blasting, the animatronics come alive, too much power, power outage, I don't know. I, I think there's some scene trickery going on in here. That's what I'm trying to get at. We got Mike switching between all the cameras. We can see the arcade, uh, a hallway here right behind my face cam, the dining room, the main stage as well. Classic shot of all the characters on the main stage. It looks so, so good. And I think I missed one earlier. Uh, just another arcade. Cool. In the 80s, kids went missing. Got a bit of backstory with Vanessa. Seems like she's going to be our lore dump. I guess it seems like she's really just there to fill in exposition. Close up shot of Foxy though. Interesting to note, he's got actual pants on. Like <laughs> you can see the button and everything. These are real pants. Seems like they put on the character. The endo hand, the hook, all of the scratches and and missing pieces of his chest, arms. He's completely missing his legs. He looks so good. A shot of someone being dragged away. My best guess right now is probably the night guard before Mike that we saw in the teaser trailer who got killed at the exit. That's really all I can think of right now. It looks like it takes place in maybe the same area. Maybe this right here, this door is the exit that he's trying to get to and now he's being dragged away. I don't know. Who do you think this is? The police search Freddy's top to bottom. Police search Freddy's top to bottom. They've not found anything. We've got Foxy right here. You can't really see him. There we go, foxy stained glass right there. Let's go back at another shot of Vanessa. Looks like she's in a different outfit as well that we saw her in earlier. Looks like she's in more of a jumper sweater. Earlier she was in her full uniform, which by the way, Shelly, seems like they might've done a bit of a name change here. Originally, we got reports that Vanessa's full name was Vanessa Monroe, which was already different from Vanessa in Security Breach, whose last name starts with an A, but it looks like Either that report was false, or maybe they changed it, not entirely sure, but yeah, her full name is Vanessa Shelley. We've got Abby exploring a little bit, we can see it. Looks like these are the steps up to the arcade room. Over here, we've got the main stage. Over here, we've got Pirate's Cove. Something I love is how they've kind of, looks like they've brought the stages closer together, so it looks a little bit more identical to what, you know, uh, those three stages look like in Showbiz Pizza Place with the rock fire explosion. How you had all of the main guys who usually traditionally were the singers, the actual band members. No disrespect to uh, Rolf De Wolf and Billy Bob. But they were more like for comedic purposes. So they had their own like full stages off to the side. So it looks like they've kind of done a similar thing with that here. Hello? 
We've got Abby exploring around. That is going to be a very bad idea. Abby, you can hear children giggling. Could be the spirits inside the animatronics, but looks like the curtains do open up. Uh, no, I, actually, I guess they were already opened a bit. Top to bottom. Hello? So she's probably looking through that gap. Sees Freddy. They never found She's like, what? <laughs> and then Freddy's eyes light up. Freddy Fazbear's Pizza Place. Yeah, look at how old and decrepit the sign is. Oh my gosh. We got our first look at Joseph Poliquin as Carl. We've got Christian Stokes as Hank or Uncle Hank, as sometimes he's referred to. Uh, mainly in its Twitter description, actually. Then we've got Cat Carter Sterling as Max. These are brand new characters, and fun fact about these brand new characters, another Easter egg in the scene, if you look at Coral's shirt, you can see it is Midnight Motorist. How cool is that? Not entirely sure who this is right here. Looks like they're breaking into this place. Looks like this could be a crowbar. Uh, he's got a baseball bat, so seems like they're probably breaking into Freddy's. Probably do some vandalizing. I don't know. They're pulling up in their Chevy. They're like, hey, let's... <laughs> Go break into that old that old building. Why the place but it's not going to end well for them, as we're going to see as, you know, Hank goes into the janitory, janitorial okay. closet. He's like, oh, hell nah. This is probably Bonnie's first kill, I'd imagine. What does what, what what Hank got here? What is this? Oh, he's turned on the light. Okay. So he's turned on the light. It's swinging back and forth. He turns around. And he... Well... <laughs> Seems like he's dead, bro. <laughs> that is a very bloody hand. So there's gonna be blood in the film, which is already a positive. Bonnie gets a kill, which is a positive. It's his own independent kill because he's the only character that goes into the closet. The only negative to this is that Hank's freaking dead, man. That's why the place shut down. <laughs> Rip and chat Hank. So we've got the forest scene. We've got scribbles of Spring Bonnie, it seems, or just Bonnie, but most likely Spring Bonnie. Ghost children possessing giant robots. <laughs> Ghost children possessing giant robots. We get a shot of... I don't remember your name. I apologize, but the child who possesses Foxy. Who can tell? Red clothing. Hook. Even to reiterate the point, it flashes Foxy's hook like... Those dead kids possessing the animatronics. We get a shot of Mike in the woods. Possessing giant robots. Shot of all the, um, all the dead kids. Bonnie. Uh, Foxy. Freddy. Golden Freddy. Chica. They all run away. A lot of people, including me, think that's just simply a, you know, when he's dreaming, when he goes to sleep, he has this dream, this nightmare. And like I said, this is just a casual shot of them hanging out in the dining room. So most likely relatively early on in the night when uh, Vanessa's still giving him the exposition. And it's like, thanks for the heads thanks up. Heads up. <laughs> oh, their dynamic is going to be so good, man. Then we get the shot again of Freddy behind Mike. Technically, they're animatronics. Nerd emoji, Vanessa. Yeah, technically, they're animatronics because they're performing for entertainment. Freaking nerd emoji. When the night shift starts. Shot of Foxy. Look at him. Oh my gosh. This looks to be outside the security office. We can see it says uh, security. Looks like it says security. This is where you clock in with your, with your card. And he's just vibing out there. Not running as well. Seems like he's just kind of lurking there. Which isn't something Foxy traditionally does, so I do hope at some point we get a big chase scene. You know, as creepy as this is, it's pretty uncharacteristic for Foxy. So... All right. I hope he does more, but this is the entrance to the pizzeria. Another security camera. Um, check first, you must be any height to have fun. Whoa, that's so cool. I can have fun no matter what height I am. More posters of kids enjoying their time at Freddy's. You got, the, again, welcome sign. Um... Abby <laughs> uh, going into the restaurant. Interesting thing, all the lights are on right now. This is either another night, if they go back another night. A lot of people just assumed it was going to be across one night, because why would you go back? But it's interesting, because this is her going in to the pizzeria through the entrance, which we saw here, Give me where she was with Mike. But in this shot, she's not with Mike. Uh, jean, jacket. Red pants, blue backpack. Uh, yeah, this is a completely different scene. So maybe it does take place across a couple nights. A lot of people just assumed, logically, why would you go back? <laughs> but it seems like maybe nothing that interesting happens the first night, so they do end up going back a couple more nights, but it's gonna be interesting, you know? What do they want? 
We get a good shot of Bonnie here. Oh my gosh. Again, the endoskeleton. The characters. They look so good. A lot of people are pointing out the yellow eyes as well. There was a severe lack of bright red eyes in this trailer that we saw in the last teaser trailer. And I've seen a lot of people say, Oh, they listen to the fans. They've changed the eye color. I don't think that's the case. It seems like these characters have different eye colors depending on what exactly is happening. Like yellow seems like they're searching for someone. Red seems like they found someone and they're getting aggressive. I definitely don't think they will change the red eyes because again, they're not going to have red eyes all the time. Like it's most people made it out, you know, most people made it sound like they were going to have red eyes the entire time. No, they've got red, they've got yellow, they've got orange, I guess, as well. And sometimes, they just got regular eyes. They're going to have a whole spectrum of colors on their eyes, you know? So, I don't think it's that big of a deal that they have, again, <laughs> I think the whole eye debate alone has just been blown out of proportion, but, you know. What do they want? Whatever. I think, I think they look good. I think these yellow eyes look a lot better than the bright red eyes. And again, I doubt the bright red eyes are going to happen a whole lot throughout the film, but whatever. You can stop, you know, getting upset about the eyes now. <laughs> Jesus. Better shot of all the drawings. We got Abby here checking them all out with a giant spotlight on them, actually. Whole bunch of characters. Freddy. Um, seems like Chica as well. Balloon Boy up here. A troll face, Bonnie. The Cupcake, Bonnie. Chica, Cupcake, Freddy. Uh, and of course, right in the middle... You've got Pizza Steve! Now, you've <laughs> you've got Spring Bonnie with uh, five children. Where have I seen that before? What do they want? They want to make her like them. So we got Mike saying, what do they want? Vanessa saying, they want to make her like them. Clearly referencing Abby here. And the next shot we get is freaking Foxy quartering Abby. They want to make her. So she's checking out the drawings. She's like, what? Like, this is weird. What does all this mean? Her like them. And then it looks like Foxy finds her. Good shot of Foxy, by the way. Look at how creepy he is. Now, what's interesting about Foxy here in this shot, he looks kind of friendly, right? But then when he turns, look at his eyebrows. Bobby. They go down. Notice that. They go down. Bobby. And he gets all mad. So it seems like they're going to be friendly towards Abby. Look at the eyebrows. Look at the eyebrows. Seems like they're going to be friendly towards Abby, but everyone else who's an adult, much like in FNAF 2, they're going to get upset. They're going to rage. They're going to stuff you in a suit and then we got mike um i'm trying to think back to the orient orientation of the pizzeria this might be he might be seeing the scene where he's like abby like what are you doing why are you talking to that guy that's a that's a robot well, technically it's animatronics but what are you doing to that guy <laughs> we get carl oh i was so so happy that carl it seems like he's got a pretty big role in this film which is awesome but he looks great he's an actual animatronic he gets upset. His eyes light up. Oh, he's fantastic. The nightmare begins. When the night shift starts, uh, the nightmare begins. We've got Mike running through the mall. Notice his um, outfit as well as all the people around. And speaking of outfits, when he asks, tell me how do we stop them? Stop them. He's got a different outfit on. So maybe this is, you know, later on in the night. Looks like he's pretty sweaty, maybe a bit beat up in some areas. So again, Possibly changing outfits throughout the night or just coming back for a couple nights. Stop. <laughs> then we get a shot of Max. Again, Cat Corner Sterling plays Max. <laughs> and she does not have a good fate. It seems like this might be another death um, from the group of Carl, Max, and, and Hank. So she's looking at Freddy. A hand comes out. Who the hell's hand is this? Some people are saying this is the spirit possessing Freddy, who's like reaching out for just a simple jump scare, but also notice this. So she screams. This is that same scene, right? She's standing up on the chair. This is Freddy's foot. She's looking inside Freddy's mouth, and then she gets pulled up, presumably into Freddy's suit. A spirit can't do that. There's got to be someone inside that suit doing that. It's a bit of a weird scene. And again, I'm still very confused on what these characters' role is in the film. Like, are they here when Mike's here? Are they just, like... I don't know, man. Like, this doesn't look like... Freddy's not on the main stage here. He's somewhere else, and she's just, like, peeping inside his mouth. Uh, Foxy crushing the ball pit ball. It's too late. Abby hiding behind an arcade machine. Very similar to... This is probably a reference to Charlie and the original Silver Eyes when she's hiding behind all the arcade machines as Foxy's, um... Like, smashing them, them all up, trying to look for her. We got Freddy on the main stage. Bonnie over here as well. You can see him move a little bit. Looks like he's 
shaking a bit. Probably because of all the movement Freddy's doing, it's just, you know, making Bonnie react a little bit. But Fred is mean. He's got his, you know, his eyebrows are down. Looks like he's got a bit of a unibrow, which is kind of funny. <laughs> I can't tell if Chica's just out of frame or if she's already moved in this shot, but yeah, it looks like this might be early on in the night. This might be, again, Mike reacting to that scene of Freddy. He's like, Ugh. or this might be him reacting to Spring Bonnie. Spring Trap. Who? We're gonna talk about it a bit later on when we get a better shot of him. So let's move on for a little bit. We got Abby screaming. Aah! I think she's trying to say Mike, but <laughs> it sounds a little weird. I'm not trying to bash on Piper, but it, it sounds pretty funny. And you got Mike screaming back, Abby run. Abby go. Or Abby go. And what's interesting here, take a look at the main stage. What happened to Freddy? He's knocked over. He's lying on the floor. What happened? And then you got Abby like, it's kind of got a car driving off with I forget your name. I don't remember any of the names of the child actors. I'm so sorry. Most likely, again, hallucination, nightmare, dream, what have you, of Mike seeing this poor boy being kidnapped because it's in the same woods, so it's most likely a dream. Notice how distraught he is compared to when he saw all the missing kids, right? It looks like he was a bit more confused. Possessing giant robots. <laughs> He's like, what? Who are you kids? But when we get a shot of this boy being taken away, He's more upset, like he's he's really, really sad. So a lot of people are thinking this is um, his younger brother that might have gotten kidnapped or might have even been bit by Fredbear. So he's seeing his dead, you know, brother being taken away in this nightmare sequence. And he's all upset about it, rightfully so. Got a shot of Bonnie and Chica. Uh, this is most likely a camera shot because it's all black and white, uh, probably in the final film it's gonna be a bit staticky because it's on the camera but this is what this is what I said about the vent opening you can see it's right here and Carl is missing from Chica's plate Carl can fit in the vent right he's a small enough animatronic so that's what I'm thinking happened here I think Chica's like you know go get him like go crawl in this vent towards him and I think Carl's like hopping along in the vent <laughs> which is a funny sight to picture but yeah oh my god these characters look amazing a little goofy in the um in the pose and, and kind of how they turn towards the camera. A little goofy, but they just look so spot on, man. Jim Henson's Creature Shop. My God. Round of applause to you guys. What the actual, how did you do this? We get a shot of presumably some woman who's collapsed inside of a house. Um, and it doesn't look like it's, doesn't look like it's good. It seems like this is probably a flashback just based on the structure of the house, all, all of the olden timey furniture in the house. So this could be um, Michael's mom, and this is why he's the one looking after Abby, because maybe there was some accident with her, uh, with his mom. This could be, again, Mary Stuart Masterson. We don't know much about her, so I kind of doubt this is her, because if she's the one of the villains, I don't know. It doesn't seem like they would have a shot like this for the villain character, you know? So my best guess right now, this is Mike's mom. Then we get a shot of Vanessa in the hospital. Maybe she's been attacked by an animatronic, by Afton. Speaking of Afton. There he is. Okay, I kind of got trolled. I, there was a bit more shots in between <laughs> when I said speaking of Afton. But we got Mike beating up someone in the, in the, in the mall. Everyone's speculating and has kind of agreed that this is the job he had before getting the job at Freddy's. He beats up someone, he gets fired. Hey, I need a job. Is the offer for the security guard still available? Stuff like that. And then he gets out of a vent from underneath the stage, it looks like. So I guess at some point Mike's going to go into the vents. And again, don't know why he's beating up this guy. Some people thought uh, it's because he recognized him as William. And he's, he's like, you killed my brother, you bastard. And I guess if, if... You know, William is using a new name to hide his identity. I guess maybe that could still happen, but I feel like he would recognize the voice. So I feel like he doesn't know who William is, but then why would he need this? Uh, it's very confusing. I'd love to know your theories. But then we got Spring Bonnie. Springtrap, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. A lot of people are split halfway if this is Springtrap or Spring Bonnie. Seems like it's most likely just Spring Bonnie, but a bit withered away because the suit is old. Because... And by definition, Springtrap would be, you know, the Spring Bonnie suit after William's been spring locked and he's dead inside the suit. But clearly, William is still alive, you know? 
He's right here. He's still alive. <laughs> so yeah, he's also got a bow tie. You can just barely make out the bow tie. So it's definitely the Spring Bonnie suit. My best guess, this is just like a halfway version in between Spring Bonnie and Spring Trap. It's kind of like a weird withered middle ground that, you know, Afton's still using to kill kids. Because you can see, uh, allegedly, a bit of his chin right here. So he's still using the suit, obviously. But then you've got Mike running away. It looks like he's either been stabbed or maybe some claw marks or something. He's definitely gotten attacked. He's running away trying to get to the exit. It is locked and he is probably not dead. And it looks like he gets taken to this contraption. We've talked a fair bit about this in the past, uh, in a past video. I still think this is some old suit that Afton uses to torture people. And then the logo, which looks so, so awesome. And then we got Corey. Corey X Kenshin, legend himself as the taxi driver in his cameo role. Where to? Where to? Adjust his mirror. Boom. Golden Freddy. Wow. So many new films, guys. I always get the weirdos. Why do I always get the weirdos? Then you get a shot of Golden Freddy, allegedly, with Abby as well. Look at how happy she is, man. It's still a pretty big debate if this is Golden Freddy or if this is regular Freddy. If it is regular Freddy, beat him down while he's out for the count. Seems like a the smart weirdos. decision. Yeah, I. it's probably Golden Freddy. The, the issue is that he's not that golden. Compared to regular Freddy, it's, it's a bit of a lighter color, but it's not you know, strikingly gold, like Golden Freddy usually is. I think that's why there's a pretty big debate. He also has a blue eye, which Freddy has. I mean, I guess Golden Freddy could have an eye, blue eye, because we usually see him with white dots. But all in all, it's just a very confusing depiction of Golden Freddy. Also, this guy is way too massive to be inside this taxi. Like, what is going on? But that was my analysis of the final FNAF movie trailer. I'm so unbelievably hyped. This trailer offered so, so much, and it just, it looks so good, man. The characters look good, all the actors are fantastic, the set design, costume design is spot on. It really looks incredible. I cannot wait for the film. Releasing in four months from yesterday, exactly four months from yesterday, October 27th. Like I said, tomorrow we've got yet another major FNAF movie news video coming out, so definitely subscribe so you don't miss out on that. Thank you so much for watching this analysis video, and I'll catch you all on the flip side. Goodbye.